When I was about 10 or 11, I first learned about the Pirate Bay. I heard that it was this website that allowed anyone to download any movie or music that they wanted. But lo and behold, when I went to go log on to the site, I was met with this big warning saying this site has been banned by the Irish government. I didn't realize it at the time, but this was essentially my first experience with online censorship. In this video, I'm going to show you a way to not only fight back against online censorship, but how you can test how censored your internet access is and how good the performance is compared to other people. So before we understand how online censorship can occur, it's important to understand some of the steps that occur before you go onto a website. So when you go to type in an address such as google.com or whatever into your internet browser, what it first does is it uses DNS to get the IP address of the server that google.com is hosted at. Now this DNS server is normally just a default server that your internet service provider gives you, but you can also set your own custom DNS server if you want to get better performance or to avoid some of the censorship at the DNS level. Because that example that I told you before about Pirate Bay, it was done at the DNS level of the entire country. After you've been given the IP address of that server, there's various other sections where potential online censorship can occur. What we call these as middle boxes. It can also be that the website that you're trying to go to is being fulfilled by a content delivery network. And that essentially changes the website that you're shown depending on whatever country you go to. So for example, if you go to Google, depending on what country you're in, it's going to show you it in a different language, such as in Hindi if you're in India or English if you're in the United States. What this means is that there's various different sections that online censorship can occur and there's so many methods that can be used that they're too numerous to even name in this video. Now there are ways to get around this. Uh, one of the most notable ways that's become very popular recently is using a VPN. Now the thing with a VPN is that although your internet service provider can't see what you're doing, the company that's hosting the VPN can. So you're instead of placing your trust in your internet service provider, you're just doing it to a private company, which have been known to give this data to the government when asked. Alternatively, you could use Tor, which is what I'm using now. Now Tor has a kind of a weird and nefarious reputation for some reason because people just associate it with the dark web. All the Tor really is, is just a way for you to surf online without the internet service provider or anyone else on your network being able to see what it is that you're looking at. It doesn't automatically allow you to do anything illegal or nefarious in any way, and it can be a great tool to help prevent online censorship. The thing is, these are both just preventative measures, but it's quite hard to tell how censored your online activity actually is unless you can compare it to other people. And this is where the OONI comes in, or UNI if you want to give this acronym a name for whatever reason. So UNI is a pro... Uh, so OONI is a tool that basically measures how censored and how restricted your internet access is, and it also tests how good the performance of your network access is. And what it does is it publishes these results on their public database. So basically anyone can see how censored an entire country's internet service provider is. And you can compare your internet service to other people in your country. Not only is it a good way of analyzing your own network and your own internet service provider, but it gives a good indicator of how bad it is in other countries as well. They publish reports all the time for various countries so we can see just how bad the internet censorship is in them. So Belarus, for example, and Myanmar, which is currently going through a something, I don't really know what it is. Now, there's two main ways you can go about using OONI. You can do it on your mobile or on a desktop. If you're doing it on the desktop, you can use the command line interface, which is quite handy. Now, I haven't done this myself, but I wrote an article which basically explains how you can download the CLI um, for, Win for Mac, should I say, or for Linux. And if you want to, you can run that. It'll allow you to you know, select features a lot easier than just using it on the mobile. 
For demonstrated purposes, I decided to do it on mobile. You can download it from FDroid, which is what I would recommend if you're running something like Calyx OS or Graphene OS or Lineage. And if you, on a side note, if you want to learn how to install Calyx OS, which completely gets rid of all Google services on your phone, you can check out the video that I made last week. Essentially, when you start using the mobile app, it'll give you a quick quiz so that you understand the risk. When you use this tool because it has your network information in it, uh, your internet service provider can easily figure out if you ran this tool. So if you're in a country that really prohibits using Tor or other privacy tools, then it's probably a good thing to avoid using this. But yeah, it just goes through and runs these tests. So it's running the web connectivity test right now. So there's various different tests that it does, which you can see here. So it tests DNS, it tests various uh, instant messaging applications and Tor to see how restricted they are. And it also tests performance as well, which is really handy. So you can see how good your internet speed is. You could see on the screen here, this is just the results of my tests, so relatively average. Nothing too surprising came up when I ran it. But yeah, there's a lot of tutorials online on how to use VPNs and Tor and other various tools for getting around internet censorship. But I wanted to highlight this because it's shockingly unreported on various privacy and security forums. It's a great tool that not many people know about and it could really give you an insight into just how censored your internet access actually is. And I'd also suggest you check out some of the reports because some of them are really good. Like so you could see what sort of internet censorship is going on in countries you might have heard of on the news and whatever. But yeah, it's just an all around great tool that's been created by the Tor Foundation and I would really recommend you trying it out on your own network. I hope you found this video helpful and until then I'll see you next time.